Hello, hello, and welcome, welcome. Hey, it's me on cam. What up? Uh, it's me, Jonathan. How's it going, guys? You're watching the second monthly development update for Scars of Honor coming at you live from the Beast Burst Dungeon. It's me, your host, Jonathan, and with me again, returning guests. We got the same faces from last stream, of course, our glorious leader, Venelin, and our gameplay lead game design lead our uh man behind the numbers alex again i was thinking that i'm uh, i'm gonna have new guests today but they liked it so much i mean they had such a great time on the first stream that they were like you know what we're doing episode two with us again uh, and then we go like 200 more episodes that way hey, you know what <laughs> <laughs> this I'm is how we roll. <laughs> uh, so, uh, guys, uh, you can, if you for any reason missed our first stream, uh, our pilot broadcast, it's available on YouTube. Uh, we will be uploading all of our VODs, uh, the recordings from these streams on YouTube. So, if you missed one of our streams, you can always go to the uh, YouTube channel of Scars of Honor and catch up with the previous ones. We did lengthy introductions the previous uh, the previous stream, uh, so if you want to hear our huge backstories, then uh, you should refer to that one. But for for the purposes of this stream, let's just do really short ones. Who are you, sir? I'm Venelin. I'm CEO of Beast Burst Entertainment. I'm the uh, person who started this whole passion project, which uh, came to a professional uh, being called Scars of Honor, and it's a huge pleasure for me to sit down today with you guys and discuss everything that we have uh, built for the past month which i believe it's huge and we should yeah. have yeah as you said uh, on the last stream it's always an honor to talk about scars of honor I always remember an that honor. fun and how about you alex okay so i'm alex uh maybe come you closer remember, to me okay. bro no, no, come on no. come on sco sco That's scoot very, over very here man. come on get cozy with me uh, so yeah i'm the veteran right i'm, I'm making game from uh, games from 15 years so I'm, I'm here to to make things smoother hopefully He's Definitely. having fun time with us. <laughs> it's great. N n there is not a single boring day. I will tell you that much. And guys, uh, we've got studio upgrades right now. We have a huge screen uh, right across from us, and we're reading chat. I see a bunch of uh, a bunch of my viewers. I see was dirty here. I see Radev. I see a bunch of our regulars from Scars of Honor. Uh, I see Kajir. Uh, I see Decibellum. Hey guys, I'm really glad to see you. We we see you loud and clear, and we have live communication with you finally. Uh, legible. We don't have to be looking at our phones to see chat. We've been doing a lot of upgrades here on the studio. I think you'll see a little bit here when we get to the end announcements speaking of which might as well get to the announcements all right let's do a quick studio update i've got here uh yeah we got studio upgrades i don't mean studio upgrades as in beast burst in general but this dungeon the dungeon <laughs> dungeon upgrades uh so if production can pull up uh we even had like a couple of pictures for that uh show us show 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 the the viewers yeah, see, this is you guys on the chat across from us and the live feed. There's the cameras that our uh, wonderful operator, Steph, is running. So, yeah, props to the entire uh, team who's the backbone here with us. Uh, it's not just the three of us you see on cam. Uh, there's Stefan on the cameras. There's Kalyan on the uh, OBS. And then there's uh, wonderful our wonderful marketing team, um, uh, Veli and your guys' uh, favorite Puffy Muffins. Puffy Muffins. Yeah, they are uh, over here uh, in the studio as well. And uh, our glorious co-leader, uh, Svillin, is also here supporting us as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's packed. We're staying late here and we're having kind of like a, a little bit of a beast burst party with the stream. Production, what's what, what's next here on the studio upgrades? What else? We, oh, Ooh. these are these are our amazing microphones here. Steph caught a really nice shot of them. What else do we got? Yeah, these are our lights. This is what we see right now. This is where we're reading you guys from, and we're looking at the live broadcast as well. So yeah, we've been uh, yeah we we installed a, a pole <laughs> as well in the studio. It's pretty cool, man. It's pretty cool. Anything else on the studio? Yeah, and this is uh, Kalyan's production desk. Here's uh, there's OBS and and the soundproofed walls and just yeah, man. We've been we've been upgrading the studio. Uh, I'm <laughs> I spend most of my time in the dungeon here at Beastverse, so I'm really proud of uh, what we've built. We call it the dungeon for and it's kind of mean. <laughs> All right, back to full cam. Uh, another uh, update is, as you might have seen, uh, I installed uh, your guys' favorite Twitch um, plugins. So you can now use 
better TTV emotes, you can use Franker's faces, and you can use 7TV. So you guys have got in chat all of your Keg W's, your Pogs, and, 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 and Pepegas, and whatever peepos. So yeah, you can go ahead and use those. If, uh, if your favorite emote is missing, just message us on Discord, and I will add it to the channel as well. All right, what else do we have? Um, yeah, by the way, uh, we also might be looking for mods, so you can message Puffy Muffins on Discord to apply for Twitch mod as well. Uh, another thing we want to um, take into account is uh, we're almost at 30,000 uh, likes on Facebook. We're at like 29,000 last I checked, so please uh, give, us, uh, give us a hand in that final push to getting to that 30k. All right, so I need to ask you, chat, a question. Another thing we want to kind of uh, pat ourselves on the back for is we released a machinima. Uh, can you help me out in chat and tell me if you guys have seen it? So can we get a zero in chat if you have not seen our latest machinima, the one with the news with Bitterblade Braxton, and a one in chat if you have seen it so that we can decide if we should do a live viewing. Oh, I see two of you haven't seen it. Was Dirty hasn't, Shemi hasn't. Oh, Disabellum has watched it. Everyone's watched it. A lot of people have I would be surprised it. if Kashi didn't watch it. Yeah. So what do you guys think? Should we do like a little... Should we Should we play the Machinima? Yeah, why not? It's your baby, man. It's yeah, man. Machinima. All right, guys. Uh, so for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, production, can you play the uh, Machinima and mute us? And we'll do like a little bit of a watch party type thing. Good evening, citizens of Aragon. You're watching the Realm Report on Aragon News Network. I'm your host, Bitterblade Braxton, with the latest news. Two orcs and an undead mage are detained after attempting a major heist at the White Song City Bank this week. The huge theft took place in broad daylight as the bandits managed to infiltrate the building by incapacitating the staff with sleeping darts and breaking the magical firewall of one of the vaults, taking over 50,000 gold. Fortunately, local authorities quickly intervened thanks to the bag's magical protection, pinpointing the robber's precise location. The subsequent chase culminated in the successful capture and arrest of the suspects. City Guard Commander Lawrence Valorbound congratulated his force's rapid response and offered insights into the possible motive behind the crime. My theory is that the Domination is carrying out these missions in secret, so they can further destabilize our economy and bolster their war funds in our soil. They say they did this for personal gain, I say different. It's about time we take more draconian measures on our part. Hello, please help me. It's us or them, and I won't tolerate any leniency for criminal activity. The suspects faced expedited justice during the case, with them slated for public execution on Friday. Make sure to tune in for the exclusive broadcast only on ANN. And now, a quick word from our sponsors. Hey there, Shama Saddleback at Mythical Mounts Emporium here offering some of the best mounts the whole of Aragon has to offer at the lowest interest rates guaranteed. Don't believe me? Come on down and see. We've got a wide selection of mounts including horses, dead and alive, elven spirit antlers if you're one of them softies with a holiday spirit, whatever these friggin' fish things are and saving the best for last, we've got the Turbo Snail. This baby can fit your entire inventory in it. It's bigger, it's better, it's faster, it's eco-friendlier, it's sexier. Available now in three premium styles that will get them wannabe racers fluking and the ladies looking. So what are you waiting for? Come on down to Mythical Mount Emporium right now and get your mount with a complimentary air freshener, protecting it from reeking like a dead Gronthar's dunk hole. And now, sports. Farable's great snail race is in jeopardy after multi-time champion Fennec Rider allegedly used unregulated performance-enhancing substances in preparation for this year's competition. The athlete hailed by many as one of the greatest racers in all of Aragon addressed the press today, claiming ignorance of the substance's illegality while also acknowledging their long-time use. Man, I've been given this potion by the shamans for years. Now suddenly, I fail a test because they decided my medicine is considered illegal. The fact that it took them this long to bust me with this substance just goes to show how incompetent the organizers of this league really are. They've been riding on my coattails for ages, and now that my ratings have started dropping, they want to put me and my snail down. This is a conspiracy. This is bu A shocking fall from grace indeed. The organizers have refused to comment on Ryder's allegations, dismissing them as defamation and expressed pursuing legal action. Accusations! 
false accusation. And They've also confirmed that following the scandal, the racers' illustrious career records will be erased from the competition's history. The fate of the great snail race remains unknown, as sponsors have reportedly pulled out of this year's edition due to the backlash. You are made of Organizers are left scratching their heads, considering either postponing the event or canceling it altogether. And now, with a special weather report for this week with our lovely weather succubus, Nita Lee Tricks. It's gonna be hot. Thanks, Nita. Amazing work as always. And that's a wrap, folks. Another day, another whirlwind of headlines and hilarity. Thanks for tuning in and stay with us to watch the series premiere of Aragon's Next Top Assassin right here on ANN. Until next time, this is Rome Reports, Bitterblade Braxton signing off. Good night. What are we looking at? Are we, uh, am I live? <laughs> Production, what up? All right, it seems that I'm live again. Oh, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. We put in... Uh... What? Right away. What? what? <laughs> we, just, we just had a bomb. What? It's all good? It's all good? We live? We good? We're just showing something from another game. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Uh, <clears throat> so that was our machinima. Uh, what you guys need to know is um, we're like we as of as if I'm having any <laughs> role on that. They, the wonderful people that are making the actual game, uh, are doing a huge uh, revamp of the graphics. And uh, the video team and I are very excited to be able to make machinimas with the new uh, visuals, with the new graphics. This machinima was uh, obviously on the previous uh, now scrapped visual graphics system, but I cannot wait. I literally cannot wait to get my hands on the new the new visuals so we can make so much prettier machinimas. Uh, production, can I get my camera a little bit lower? I think. Can you, can you lower that? Oh, oh. You just became taller. That's, yeah, that's beautiful. All right. Uh, and finally, lastly, uh, I just want to tell you guys that our team is expanding. We keep expanding. There's so many new colleagues constantly being hired. You want to say a couple words about that? Yes, we are very active on finding new talent because we need to expand in many different levels. As you already said, we are uh, revamping the whole graphics, but we are not stopping there. We are uh, very actively working on several different uh, uh, platforms. As we all know, uh, Scars of Honor is a cross-platform game, so it requires a lot of a lot of uh, development power and a lot of talent. So we are hiring 24/7 nice all right so yeah we're hiring if uh if you guys decide you can go to the beast burst website and see uh, how you can get involved if you feel that you have competences competencies that can be useful to our team we will definitely hear you out all right so uh next uh, on the chopping block is the progress update and here is the uh, biggest chunk of graphics visuals uh, images and uh the thing that we are all here yeah, for right yeah what everyone's here for uh, first of all, um, then he's going to talk about um, the art update. Uh, this is a huge undertaking that's been going on for the uh, for a number of months now. It's a total 100% revamp of all the graphics, renderings, visual effects, lighting, uh, and it just gives it's like an entire new coat of paint of the to the entire game. But I'll let the experts uh, tell you guys more about that. And in the meantime, we will be looking at like a number of visuals. I see here at least. 25 little snippets and pieces of graphics that you will be able to see. So if uh, Kalyan can uh, start slowly playing those through, uh, or first of all, why don't you play that that long environment one while Venny tells us a little bit about generally the yes. art update itself, and then we'll go and comment on the specific Absolutely. pieces. So uh, to speak about art and not showing it is just like describing how good a food is and never being like uh, tasted. So guys, you can see what we have achieved just by looking at your screen. You can see the, the fidelity of uh, just the environment and the general overall hole that we did and the whole pipeline, if you will, is completely different. The most important part is the beauty that you see over here on your screen is actually working very well in mobile as well. This is uh, something that we, you know me as a spoiler, uh, a spoiler king. So we are working uh, to bring Scars of Honor very actively for next uh, big event to uh, have it available on mobile. 
So what you see here on this screen and this amazing graphics will be there on mobile for you when it uh, uh, when it comes. Um, to develop this requires a lot of a lot of uh, talent, and I'm so happy to say that here in Beast Burst we are very lucky to to have uh, the 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 desire and the power of the uh, the expertise and experience of uh, so many people to to achieve this. So you can just. Uh, let us know in the comments what what do you guys think do you like uh, what we have uh, done over here how we overhaul the graphics and, and stuff because right now on your screen are something that is not final but is uh, of course uh, uh, a work in progress and you're looking at iron guard continent this is uh, uh, nature taken out from iron guard so this is uh, one of the two big continents so let us know in the comments what do you think guys yeah, this looks amazing, and the fact that it's not even final is just wow. Just, Absolutely I can't not final. Wait, yeah. I can't wait to see how this evolves. We have so many things to uh, to to add. If we can probably switch to uh, some of the the next views because we have amazing yeah. stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's go through visuals one through eighteen right now. So what do we have here? I think we this is the idle animation of the Baron now with the new visuals, yeah. right? So working on the environment is uh, absolutely something that we should do because we are listening to our community and we are always uh, taking feedback and we have heard that we need to up our graphics. But to increase your graphics in environment without upgrading your look for uh, character, uh, for characters, for uh, NPCs and creatures is just not a thing. You need to make sure that characters uh, creatures they fit very well with the biome of the the environment this is why we have decided to overhaul some of the the characters some of the models to make them feel more alive more vibrant and to make them fit better in the in the environment itself in the world that you are uh, living in and we should not and we should never forget that every single minute that you play in scars of honor you be having your character on the screen. So character is extremely, extremely uh, important. And in, thank you for on the production for bringing this uh, amazing view because this shows how uh, the on the the new revamped uh, character fits on the old uh, en environment. And you can see that it uh, uh, shows that it is more alive and like more humanoid than it than it used to be. Yeah, and, the, and their faces are so much more lifelike now. They have emotion. Before, they were like wax sculptures a little bit, whereas now I see I see personality in them, which... Uh... And there is something very, very important with that we should not forget. We have uh, uh, created, and, and this is something that I'm joking with uh, my developers, because we, he, we have now our new amazing uh, art director who have done like complete overhaul on the graphics and everyone is like, oh my God, you are a god, how you did that? It's so cool, it's so interesting. And then I had a discussion with uh, one of my top developers speaking about, you know what? You are working in the shadows. You did something amazing, which nobody will ever say you did great. And he was like, yeah, I agree. And then we un unveiled the secret that we've managed to get all of the textures for the different parts of the body to be compiled into a single texture. Uh, all meshes to be compiled and runtime in, into single into single mesh, which gives you a huge boost in the productivity. Why I'm saying this? Because you want to have a good looking character that is compelling in, in looks, but also performant. You don't want to have like five characters and you are done. Your PC or your uh, uh, mobile is like burned out and you cannot even uh, play. it. So we have created amazing, amazing uh, progress on the performance uh, uh, as well as graphics. And we are always keeping in touch. Like if we bump the graphics, we need to make sure that this thing also improves or at least keeps the same the same performance because for us when we are cross-platform performance is truly truly something important yeah this is uh, this is really amazing thing. i've been playing games for my entire life and i've never thought about this until uh, you brought it very, up. And... very cool animation by the way i really like the the emotion what do you guys think do you like the new overhaul of the animations do you how do you do you find them let us know in the chat can you go a little bit more 
technical and but like noob friendly because mm -hmm. I think this is something very interesting. Oh, hold on. Before that, look at this. <laughs> Let's not drop it. This. Let's not drop hold it. Hold on. Oh my god. Okay, wait. Never mind what I was saying. Just look at this. Oh my. So these are zebra sculpts. I'm thinking. Yes. This is these are high, high polys. All right, but uh, let's okay, let, keep these keep these up because I need to ask some technical stuff because this is for me. This is not I'm not even like trying to be the good host. Uh, this I'm also a, a huge noob in this, but like explain it to me what, what you said about textures and meshes. So everyone knows what a, a texture is. A texture is the image that goes onto the 3D thing. Exactly. That it's like a, it's like a picture that, that you stick a sticker or paint that you put on the shape, right? Yes. And uh, we know that back in the day when we would do custom skins for like old school games, they were like a file that were they were kind of like unwrapped into like one the, file yes, that wraps around the The thing is, when model. you have like uh, a huge modifications in games like ours, and this is why some uh, recently released uh, MMORPGs, which are cross-platform, mm -hmm. are not allowing you to have like full customization of your look. And the moment when you have this as a feature, it introduces a technical reason uh, why these companies said, oh, my, oh, we are staying away. We are not giving a full customization because the moment when you introduce it, as you said, it is just a simple file, a texture. But when you have a, a customization, it means you have a lot of this because you have exactly. different. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's my next question. Files up and it creates a huge load. Explain something else to me, and you'll definitely be explaining it to a lot of chat because I'm sure that they're as lost as I am on this. So basically, you have the 3D model of a naked character with no yeah. gear, right? And you have the 3D model of a skull helmet, like mm -hmm. a skeleton hat, whatever, right? So that's a one mesh. A mesh is like a 3D model with all the triangles. So you have the mesh of the character, you have the mesh exactly of the skull hat. Exactly, on the screen, you're yeah. seeing okay. a mesh without texture. But that's a high poly one, then, yes. then it would get like optimized mm -hmm. for... But my, my question is this, so you guys figured out a proprietary internal Beast Burst type of technology that allows the system to automatically merge the, the model of the, the, the mesh of the of the character and the mesh of the hat into like one thing so they don't do this interlocking type of thing. I don't I don't want to use something that we unveiled a big secret and now we can have like a million of players online. It sounds really cool. Uh, yes, but it is not something like we invented the new hot water or something. No, it is just a requiring skill. It is something that we haven't like uh, uh, discovered but it requires a skill to integrate properly and to make it work. So this is what we did. Okay, cool. And what we did that others didn't is just we take the, the risk and we went in and I can say we succeeded. Because this is the biggest technical point on the client side. Because making an MMORPG is not just I want beautiful graphics. Okay, you want these beautiful graphics, but they need to be connected and they need to... If you wave on the camera, well, hello chat, uh, you need to make sure that they see exactly, exactly this. And it produces a whole other layer of like multiplayer complexity. But multiplayer, we started like fighting these battles even before even we had the company and we sorted all of the, the nasty issues beforehand. I can completely say there is no technical challenge right now that Beast Burst cannot handle. Period. Man, Venelin gets me so freaking excited about the game. Every time he talks about it, I get excited, even more excited than I usually am. All right, can we get the next visual production? Oh, wow, look at these crazy customizations. Ooh, I'm, I was liking that. Is it too fast? Chat, is it too fast? Chat, did you recognize Heihachi from Tekken on the right? That was like, Heihachi, <laughs> good hairstyle. I think I know what I'm picking for my human character. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit too fast. It's fine. We can see them. Those are really cool. Yeah, there's a hatch right there. Nice. How about next one? Oh, and there's the females. So are these actual... Is Are, are these the are the in development, uh, like, actual, like, models for human female? Uh, let's give the word to, to Alex. He's oh. so familiar. Hello, with it. <laughs> Hello he's Hello, here. here. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is this is this is a work in progress, right? There, there is a lot of things we need to do, uh, but mostly we are here seeing the customization option we want to put. So one thing I want to say to to piggyback on what Venny said uh, at the start is that it's important that we uh, get the next milestone when it comes to every component of the graphics, right? So it's. We, the main thing we need to always remind ourselves and, and you guys, because you are our guys, 
is that we want this game in 2026 to be visually competitive, even if we're uh, in this studio with, with uh, not like insane overblown budget, right? So every step we do, we do it together and we share it with you guys. And you can have this opportunity to also give feedback and tell us, yeah, we love that or we didn't love it, uh, like that. And this, this also allows us to always basically take you on a journey, right? That's, that's the main thing I need to share. Because it's not like, hey guys, this is what we need to do. In two years, we will call you and tell you. No, uh, this this is the iteration process. And and what you see, guys, uh, it's it's a step in the right direction. But yeah, this is customization of the of the hair, uh, the beard, different styles for the for the human race. But um, it's just another step in the right direction. Yeah. It's not the final thing. And guys, I see you asking questions in chat. Uh, you can be sure that production is uh, saving those. And uh, if the if time allows, we'll go through a bunch of uh, these questions. I see uh, old D is asking about yeah. system requirements. So I hope I hope we'll get through that. Uh, I see OAD3 US is asking, wait, not full customization. I think this might be a little bit misleading. So let's clarify that right now. These that are, you're looking at right now, it doesn't mean that these are the only looks. No, no. You can have like different yeah. eyes, different yes. hairs, different everything. Uh, everything. It's, the so color, it is full customization. This is, this is just showing uh, what we are going to do, guys, is we're going to always show you something from the kitchen. So we are not going to wait to have something extremely polished to just say this is it. And and, and every three months to, to uh, show you a few few absolutely over the top high polys that actually you're not going to see in the game. Uh, we, we are showing progress and this is super important for us. We will communicate with you every month, everything we do, just because again, it's a journey. We want you to be with us, right? And, and also to give us feedback before we go deep into that. If there is a need of more customization, we're going to go deeper on that. So far, we, we are just uh, breezing through it, but uh, so far we, we have the good progress, right? Yeah, nice. And thanks to everyone who showed up in chat. By the way, we're sitting comfortably at almost 100 viewers. So huge thanks to everyone who showed up. I see my brother Daniel tried. I see Kukuta VR. I see so many faces from Twitch uh, that I know and love. So yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for showing up. It, it means a lot to us. Can I interrupt you for a second? There is a question. The game will be optimized for low requirement PCs. I think we can we can say something about that. Absolutely, we have even uh, went ahead of this because, as we all know, uh, Scars of Honor is a cross-platform game, and it if it can run on the phone, most likely <laughs> it will run on your uh, PC if it's not like 20 years old. So yeah, optimization is is extremely important also to achieve high number of online players because uh, guys, if we want. I said it like many times and I'll keep on repeating. The moment when I said, uh, uh, I said, sit down and I said, okay, I want to make an MMORPG, I want it to be good, but in order to be good, you need players. Okay, but if I restrict by creating top notch, uh, uh, like high fidelity, ultra realistic graphics, right away I can like uh, strip probably 90% of the player base because either you have like top notch uh, PC so you can play it or you just can watch it on stream and that's it. So optimization is super important. All right, can we get the next visuals up? Looks really cool. Can Puffy show oh, up yeah. for a sec? Yeah, I think. Oh yeah. I think, oh my, oh, this is my favorite one. Out of all the visuals that we're showing today, I think this Animation. one's my favorite. Look at this, dude, He's look at these. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to lie, guys. When I saw that, uh, I almost shed a tear, and it was like, "What is that from for, for from our game? Will this be in the build?" So we we're getting in that direction, but it's insane. The, right? The Look at that, is. dude! Look at that! That is so. This is something that Lovecraftian. Can chase you in your nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> now that one I wouldn't call cute. Remember the one I was calling yeah, cute last night? This is your cute stuff. No, this is all. Oh, these are, dude. These are just cuties. Oh, these are amazing and the Aren't different they? variants are so cool chat tell us is it cute or not chat Come on. rate rate these one through ten i swear everyone one through ten numbers in chat i want to see that screen shake we have an awesome that's almost 11 right yeah an awesome <laughs> is like an 11. but no the doggy by the way the dog is just i'm i'm so proud with the work of the guys i was really like are, are we testing something what happened where where are we building that but actually dude those look just really good dude oh my god yeah these imagine are, writing this yeah these are amazing 
nice. Yeah, much tens, nice, tens, nice, 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 nice. Just, thank you. just take a, a look, take a moment to see the the animation. I'm always saying to the artist guys, you're making beautiful stuff. I see you draw beautiful 2D concepts. Then our 3D artist takes and makes it like super beautiful. They make the mesh, then they make the text, the textures, and I see like every level in the production which makes top quality. And I'm always bringing it back to the animation artist, and I say, look. Go and see what the people in Beast Burst did before you. 2D concept, uh, 3D mesh, texture, and it, everything is packed here for you. You need to do the animation. And they're like, oh my God, I need to do a good job. And they did. And they did. Amazing. Amazing. I, and another thing that I'm looking at is just the material work I feel is really good. For example, here the shine on the feathers, but most of all, what I was most impressed with is the octopus. Some of the uh, the tentacles feel like they have that subsurface scattering yeah. for the light. Look, look at how the light passes to kind of like through semi translucent. I mean, it's freaking amazing, dude. That's great. All right. Uh, <clears throat> how about next? about next visuals okay here we have a little bit of the on the oh. armor and equipment side what can you guys tell us about this yeah okay do you want to start of course no of course <laughs> i'll give this to you so i would say this right we we went through number of iteration of the armors and it's really really special because we were looking for something that works for everyone we found some absolutely amazing options but they were like like by free people and didn't like by others. So we were always, we were constantly calibrating what we we're doing with the armors. And at one point we just find one thing that was done like two years ago by one of our um, riggers. And we were like, why are we not having more of that? So after that, we, we really made uh, changes on the technical side, uh, how we are doing the pipeline with, with the uh, characters. And that's a new thing. Um, so basically we are doing this, this really actually very optimized, but very, very high fidelity items. Because again, our art director, he's a, in, an insane artistic person that have an armors and swords and, and, and he just live, almost he lived in thousand years ago. At least he wants to. So he really go deep into those details, just everything to be realistic from, from a very, very uh, different age. Uh, but things things are just, they have substance. You can touch them, they, they, they have weight. Before it was not easy to create that. Uh, so I, I can't wait to get this model and apply new effects, new animations, new combat uh, modification. We are also testing just to see the, this b uh, body in action, right? It's, it's gorgeous. It's great. All right. How about the next one? What do we have? What do we have prepared here? Oh, so that's the shark. Uh, that's the shark mount uh, in a testing environment here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He's cutie? A cutie. <laughs> it's a cutie. It's definitely a cutie. You see how the environment when it's just where uh, this is a test scene that we have. But you see how environment uh, uh, affects the way yeah. you have the uh, the character in this uh, scenario. It is a shark. It's not really a character. It's a creature. But um, it is very very important to to have these things aligned perfectly. Here it's a bit more of a demonstration. Just the animation and liveness of the of the the mount itself and uh, overhauling of the animation systems that we that we apply. By the way, is uh, are some mounts going to be able to swim, or is that spoiler? Uh, so we will we we'll answer that in the in some of the next meetings. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. But th I should, I feel this one should be able to swim. No, so we, swimming we, will be DLC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one one thing I would say again, this is this transparency thing that we want to build with you guys uh, to not over promise or or hide everything because it should be really open for you guys. Um, we really want to, to keep the mounts on the ground running for the water. If we can make them uh, change the way they're animated while they're swimming, it will be uh, a good addition. But uh, so far, at least, we, we are not going too much into the flying. Just want to mention that because we really want our world to be grounded, to have a dimension and not for you to skip the whole world because you just fly by, by a mountain and it's over, right? Just want to mention that it's a little bit of everything can change but we we really want with uh, with the mounts to to tell a story and by the way every mount our mounts will be a little bit different than uh, some games they will have their own unique um, attributes 
uh, and there are details we can share maybe later today or maybe in a month about uh, the mounts and their inventories. Yeah. They, oh, spoiler. They're not oh, just going spoiler. to be... Spoiler, yeah. They're not just going to be something that takes you from point A to, uh, to point B. So stay tuned, guys. It's not a bus. It's not a car. It's a multifunctional. Hey, that reminds me of... <laughs> come on down to Mount Emporium. <laughs> Get yourself on a complimentary mount with an air freshener. All right, guys, uh, next visual. What do we got? Are we up to 24 to 27 now? I don't even remember what, what I put in there. So I'm, I'm being surprised as well. All right, let's see what, let's see what we got next. Is there uh, any of those uh, picture of you with, b before your morning coffee? No. It's surprising to, uh, okay. No. So what is, what are we seeing here? Uh, this is the wolf. This uh, is the wolf for the honored. Yeah, it's, it's. Oh, this is the reward? Yeah, this is uh, something that uh, we are planning to award everyone who has an honored account. So guys, let us know. Do you like it? Everyone with honored, come on. Oh yeah, this, uh, is this the, the official first reveal of the honored mount? Yeah, this is oh, the official nice. first review of the honored mount. And they'll get all the variants and they'll be able to freely pick between let us know which one you like the most but i'm pretty sure that the top left like takes the cake <laughs> well yeah it's <laughs> um, yeah we, we we can use a lot of that some of them we can even use for enemies we want our world to be kind of consistent so uh but definitely it's something we are building those rewards that people need to get uh we want to build them for for uh near september version right yo is there an mmo where there's like a wolf, for example, which is like a creature, an enemy, and there's a way for you to tame it and make it into a mount. That would be cool. There is, and there will be soon. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> that is very cool. All right, on to the weather update and visual number 28. Uh, the weather visuals that we got, guys, are on the old graphics. We're like this close to getting you footage of weather effects on the new visuals. But unfortunately, we couldn't get that in for today. So um, Venny's going to talk about uh, weather update a little bit. And you're going to be watching some uh, weather experiments, uh, which are old works in progress. They're not that flattering visually, just in comparison to what we have now with the new graphics. But imagine, just try to translate this to the new visual systems. Uh, we're just showing this to make sure uh, that you realize that there's been effort being put into like so many areas. Uh, terrain enemies characters sound weather day night cycles so many things uh, so let me give it a, give it to venny to so talk about the weather a little yeah here it, the only thing that matters uh, in this uh, demo is basically the vfx uh, the scene is absolutely a demo scene which uh, just translates the effect of uh, this fiery storm and if we can switch to the to the next one in our uh, presentation please so this is something that is yet again using the old graphics and we had to probably put this into the uh, into the newest because it will give you a better uh, presentation but yet again focus only on the vfx itself which is basically the falling leaves in this matter because only this is what we're going to take from this scene and apply in our new uh, uh, environment we have all of the uh, the the weather effects, and they are representing uh, uh, parts of the uh, the seasons. If you if you will, so if we can uh, swap to the next one. Ooh, this yeah. is moody. This is very moody. Yeah. So. This is something that is uh, probably one of the most uh, like oh, wow. eye-catching uh, um, uh, effects that we are going to see. This is the rework of the uh, the storm. This is something that is uh, very vibrant, and this in the next month when we release it, with showing it like in more final, like wrapped up as a, a, a package you can see that this stands like completely completely differently to our uh, oldest weather system yet again don't mind the environment here this is a test scene 
How do the weathers transition from one to another? Does it go smoothly if you want to go from this to like the like whatever other weather is available? Uh, there is kind a blending. Of blend? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Blending. That would be cool. Blending system, so there is not like snap. Yeah, exactly. How, how does it like change from one from, to the... uh, like super rainy like uh, storms to firestorm or like autumn to, to snow? Please we... make that lighting randomly hit players. <laughs> everybody, everybody, when you see it, you imagine like, okay, I need to take shelter or I will be electrocuted so um, yeah. this is something uh, look effects uh, during uh, weather is something that we we need to to get um, on top on point on top of it uh, but uh, at the end of the day it would be nice if those effects actually affect how you play the game yeah but this is right if, if you imagine releasing this game it will go, get through 20 or 22 24 amazing super big features and the weather to affect the gameplay should be in this list but definitely it's something that will come a little bit later because first we need to define the, the scene, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can play with it and change it, right? Absolutely. We're just doing open development and we are always open for such amazing ideas. And by the way, for the VFX, a big shout out to, to Sergi. Um, we, we have a new VFX lead, a person with insane amount of experience. Uh, that is with us uh, for for a couple of weeks, and we are already uh, starting to see his impact imprint on that. So uh, expect a lot of things from the VFX because we all do, and, and we definitely have now the the, the hardware to to deliver yeah. on that. Yeah, guys, just such great things are are on the way. It's like yeah, we've been in development for quite some time now, but uh, it's kind it's, there's kind of like this overhanging feeling of starting from scratch but it's not starting from scratch yes we are throwing some stuff away but uh we're not losing we're only gaining because we're getting better stuff so yeah it's very good question by the way uh Darius asks us uh tell me when we are going to see this in the next alpha i think i'll have to play in the ptr you absolutely have to play in the <laughs> ptr the thing is we have something that is very important for our current ptr players that are right, like right now uh, uh available there because of the huge like overhauling that we are doing because of so many different levels uh that we are fighting on uh, our next uh, public PTR like next week I believe if I'm, if I'm not mistaken is going to be postponed with two weeks so on the PTRs the everything that you see here will come a bit delayed because of the uh, huge package that we are now going to to prepare and pack for uh, our internal uh, PTR testers okay cool uh, so uh, is this all, all of our weather update visuals Kala? Oh no! Come on, the no, winter. We have the this winter. This is the, the 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 one of the the important stuff. And here is something that we are also not showing, but we are building upon. Uh, the moment, uh, and we are not uh, showing it here in this environment because the environment will be out of scope. This is uh, not what uh, we are going to have in final. In the final environment, when we apply snow, you can see it like piling up. You can see it piling up oh, wow. and, like on the rooftops and stuff. Uh, oh, our wow. amazing uh, uh, art director and his team, they are like so, so uh, working hard to have this and it's looking amazing. You see it. Yeah, yeah the, this scene is nothing compared to how it's going to look in the yeah, future. Yeah, just road. remember now and come to us next month to see what you're going to see. Guys, it's such a, a balancing act because like I, we know you want to see stuff, but we know that the stuff is just half-baked right now so it's like you know you want to show stuff you want to get everyone involved as much as you want but you don't want to like show something that's not as good as it could be because we're all perfectionists we all want it's it's very psychological so. cozy cozy chicken asks you can we have a, uh, a snowball fight <laughs> for you cozy we will make some <laughs> <laughs> what is the purpose of having snow if you cannot fight uh, make a, a, a snowball fight right or a snowman all right, uh, is this the last visual one or weather one? All right, so if uh, now we have two more points that we need to talk about, but we don't have uh, visuals for those. So if Kali, you can pull out the uh, zero zero environments just uh, so they roll. While uh, Venny tells us uh, your your next point here that uh, we've decided on talking about is new map. So how's the new map going? What's the what's up with the world? It is going absolutely amazing. As I said, uh, we are reviewing concepts and oh my God, the concepts for the human capital. Spoiler, I just want to spoiler. get out and leave 
uh, because it is like super super cool guys you need to see it but not now <laughs> <laughs> you need to wait for this the whole the whole map the whole continent is such a beauty we are fighting and uh, achieving great battles in performance the huge continent is more performant than our oldest farabell map imagine that we are working on many levels to optimize it so that it works perfectly on PC and mobile. It has so many points of interest. We are always discussing with game design, with art director and the art teams. How can we surprise the person when he enters the, the capital? He need, when he gets there, he needs to be like, oh my God, this is amazing. And we are keeping this like for, for the big event. The big event, which will come when? Next September. <laughs> September. <laughs> All right. Uh, this year, guys. This yeah, year. This year. Just don't worry. Uh, yeah, and this is exactly coming to our next point. Next point you've put in here is the next test, test timing. Yes. Uh, as I already spoiled it, spoiled it uh, we are having very, very big plans for uh, September this year. We want to achieve. Uh, uh, um, like our mobile optimizations, a release of the, the continent, not like fully uh, uh, build and stuff, but we want to test this tech on a larger scale. So guys, you need to prepare for September. Absolutely. All right. Um, we have a visual for the next one, which is the mobile version plus the UI. So can we, can we possibly get a, a look at that? And yeah, uh, you guys see. can run us through uh, what all that means. So that would be 22 production. In the meantime, while we're, we're prepping it, um, it's just a few words uh, on, on the mobile. Uh, one thing we want to do uh, is really to make the, the mobile player being competitive when it, they fight uh, a PC player, because again, cross platform. And we are really working heavily to, to allow both sides to, to be uh, on the same, same uh, to, on a le level playing field, let's say. Um, we this is one of many iterations on the UI and we're going to test a lot of things with the skills on the right as you see it's a little bit crowded but I want to be uh, to give you all the uh, possibilities for you uh, for you to use all your skills uh, the potions are there there is a dash that that is a big thing that we want to add uh, to a lot of classes so there is a lot of things happening on the screen on mobile when you see that on the phone it looks pretty good uh, we are also iterating a little bit with the process of combat, but just this is this is the first uh, one of the first iteration we're doing on, on mobile, and we will work until we do it right. Even mm, there is one possibility to give you options for you to customize the UI the way you want, but we will get there in the future. I'm taking over uh, Venice uh, topic. So no. you want to add something? All to of that? our topics are shared, so. You're saying the same thing that I was going to say. So it is absolutely a pleasure when you see other people sharing your idea and going together with you. So be my guest. <laughs> okay. So, so wh yeah. what do you think about mobile guys? And let's let's hear about it. Is it uh, okay? We say GGFF. He's going to help us with with the resources uh, with the PTSD. We 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 can definitely. Uh, give me a PTSD. <laughs> Giving me PTSD. Ah, okay, okay, that's that's a <laughs> oh, different. It thing. is quite important to be noted here that this is an exploration of the UI. This is not something final. We are exploring how to position the icons, how to position the uh, um, uh, the movement controller, uh, how they interact each other. We are having like every freaking day, if not like uh, every other day, tests on the combat on the mobile, how it affects. And speaking about combat. Should we drop the bomb or not? You, you should do that, man. Okay. Press we are button. overhauling the whole combat system. Like we are get what we have right now. We throw it in the bucket and some, very soon you're going to see something that is that is amazing. We are not becoming uh, like we are not dropping top target. Don't get me wrong, but we want to make something that is super fun, engaging and doesn't like put us like uh, to make us a shooter game or something like this so don't get me wrong in any way so <laughs> uh, what 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 we can say about that is that we want you to have a more dynamic experience your moment to moment experience every second for you to have a more uh, we're not doing some combat uh, from 
uh, combat game, completely like uh, fighter games. But we want you to have a lot of more option, more dynamic, more movement. And also one thing that I would say, and this is uh, my design philosophy, I don't want you to have a fight in which basically it's it's out to win fight. And you need to go through that. It's a one minute. I just want to chop an HP bar and mm -hmm. there is no threat. I'm going to win it. And the game just forced me to go through a unnecessary fight that doesn't give me anything. So we really want you to, to feel uh, that when you play, there is an excitement, but it's also challenging. So we want the opponents to not be uh, like a redundant fight that doesn't make sense, right? That we want you your time to matter, right? That's a super important thing I want to mention. Your time is really important. If the game makes you go to point A, point B, and every time you're running 20 minutes in a, in a direction, this is this is not great design in my opinion, right? In my book, this is I'm somebody did that intentionally to waste uh, people's time, so you have more play time in a game. Absolutely. This for us means up to two minutes of any direction. You need to have things happening. You need to be challenged by an enemy. You need to find things that you want to 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 gather, uh, things that you produce. Like there should be a lot of things happening in the world, and this is the big challenge why we are. Uh, building this, let's say, first continent with this premise in mind, that there is a lot of exploration, it's just not the main quest. But just go back to the combat. We want, right now, we're testing with, with Veni and our art director, we're testing a lot of options how the spells will work, how we're going to modify them, how often you can use them. Uh, we're even testing removing auto attacks. We'll see if it works or not. If it doesn't, we, we will bring them back. But we want to keep the things really interesting but uh in the right balance that works for for a lot of people right we should not overkill it and just go super hardcore on one of the of the uh, uh spectrums and then lose everybody so we need to find the, the sweet spot that that's it and we need your feedback on that uh, i'm gonna allow myself uh... oh very good question by the way how to play for mobile game alex go okay so on mobile we don't want how to play complete out to play in our book is it's it's boring right and imagine imagine just for a sake i i'm i'm trying again this is a, a super scary battle but we have 15 years of experience how to make mobile console and pc kind of on the same level but imagine like you're fighting on uh, versus a mobile player and he's auto butting you to death and he just destroys you because everything happens on the right time and right place we the mobile experience should be uh, interesting should be active but we need how uh, we need to find the, the proper amount of assistance that makes you feel uh, that you're playing a smooth game that understand your needs even if you just have two terms. So it won't be complete out of play, guys, uh, and it won't be f out to playish. But we're looking for assistance that allow you, for example, how a melee warrior will fight uh, with a mage on PC and the warrior is on mobile, and how you're going to rotate constantly on the target. We're looking for a ways to always. Look at the target the moment you you select on it. So those are the tests we're doing. Uh, it's it again. It's iteration process, and it, it would be nice the moment we give you something, some of the next streams to see what you think about it and say, hey guys, this is great, but this is not. We, what we can do about that? And this iteration is the, the 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 secret sauce that we're looking for, right? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to throw in just a, a, a random question. Um, for the combat because uh, I'm a Souls game fan and uh, any type of genre that I've seen incorporate Souls-like mechanics into its combat I think it's been a huge success a lot of games are doing it so have you guys experimented with dodge rolling with iframes yes uh, iframes oh. no iframes no uh, I think the problem with iframes there is a lot of calculation that needs to happen with that but we really want you to not stay steady uh, if possible right uh, there is an old game uh, that a lot of you know that you stay with a two-hander, you're let's say a, a holy warrior and you just swing every four seconds or three and a half seconds and you swing again and for time some use an ability. It's called auto attack. Yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> when you see auto, it's just not good. Yeah, and this is this is the issue. The, we don't want to give you that. We want to challenge you and when you fight a creature your level or plus two levels of you, you need to f you move. You don't need to get hit by everything, so it's not DPS fight. Uh, this is this is the one thing we want to do. So like uh, so like is amazing, but it's not for everyone. We should not go completely 360 or 180 or whatever it is just to 
to find now the game is just for this group of people or it's just for this group of people. We need to find an experience that maybe we would vary between classes. Maybe some classes are more dynamic, some are more static, some are more, um, how to say it, they rely more on movement, some rely more on, on casting and supporting and, and being more stationary using summons, right? So we need time to be able to show you, but this is this is the behind the ki kitchen questions we are having every day. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on uh, to the wood cutting. Alex, what are you going to tell us about that? I think we have a screenshot of something very basic mock up. Uh, yeah, it's it's very basic mock up. Sorry, guys, about that. Um, and we, we use a very, very not great example. But again, you need to stay with us through that. Um, the idea with, with, the, with the gathering is that we're looking for a few uh, pro professions that allow you to develop a lot of things in the world. I don't want to go to too much details there. Uh, but uh, the gathering itself uh, will be a big part of the game. So it won't be just, I go to a dungeon, I kill this boss or this raid, I find this sword and it's over. And the game is over, I complete the game in a month and I should never ever open it again. Um, or at, until in two years an expansion arrive. Um, so the crafting and the gathering are key stones of, the, of you progressing and finding different way to play the game. And this, this, the gathering is just um, how to say it. It, it. It's the, it's the gate to to create a lot of random, amazing uh, things that redefine how you play the game. So this is what I can. Say Very good with question. That Professions are optional or key. This is absolutely a great question. Yes. So you can always skip and not play them, but they they give you much more on, than a lot of other titles give you. So in our case, we really embedded that as a big part of the game. Some people might even choose completely to play Trader Row, which is an important one, and really go deep to find the special materials that are very rare, uh, create an item with, with an insane amount of uh, unique things happening inside it, and then be working on specific uh, let's say, ability even on an item that now creates a completely different subclass. We want to have a lot of that without going too much into details, but this is um, this comes comes from professions. If you don't want to do that, you can always go to a dungeon, right? But I yeah. do feel, uh, I would say there, uh, if you're missing out on the profession, I think you're going to miss out on a, a big uh, way to, to have a more pleasant experience. Okay, that's really cool um have we revealed other than wood cutting what other professions uh, for sure are going in so things we we're discussing uh, on top of this is herbalism and fishing for sure uh the skinning is uh something we want to investigate as well um what i would say we don't over, uh, don't want to overstate your welcome we don't want to uh, create a profession that doesn't have a meaningful um usage right so the profession should make sense physically it should make sense right and also war wise if you go to to uh let's say mine uh, an ore there might be a very rare things let's say seward gileon tears uh, which Siwar Gileon is one big dragon in our world and his tears are special item that now because of it when you craft something you can find something that's very special inside with a lot of how to say it uh, interesting permutation of that so um, this this really really is about profession that makes sense we don't want to just create profession for the sake of number numbers so we might have two we might have five but they just need to stick the landing. That's that's the key part. And obviously we want to do more than two. Yeah, and very good question. Uh, what about house building? It's quite important to be noted that um, uh, gathering, as we call it, like all these gathering uh, um, professions that you can practice, they should lead to something. So they lead into crafting. So you can craft many different uh, stuff, one of which, and we are experimenting of how exactly to achieve it, is actually house building which will be unveiled in some of our following streams but not now yeah, for sure yes this is the holy yeah. holy trinity gathering crafting housing but we will we'll get to this but yeah. for sure you need to have a spot all right if we can pull up visual 19 and uh if we can have alex talk a little bit about the inventory and items oh yeah so guys we we are investigating again 
you will see a lot of um, uh, new things happening here and there. We want to have this feeling of you're playing uh, uh, a note to some extent old school RPG, just when it comes to uh, not the accessibility, not the, the core of the mechanics, but just have the feel of that. So we're working with, with uh, this is the character panel. Those attributes are pretty much accurate. We don't want to have 20 thousands of those. Uh, when uh, we give you an item, I want you to be able to read the item. I don't want you to start calculating what's happening with this stat and that stat and, and have a resistance of specific type. We don't want to overwhelm you with, with random things that maybe one of 10 really matters to you. Um, because if we I throw you 50 abilities at one point, you're going to just care about strength and critical damage or critical strike. Like you will care about three or five of them and rest is just fewers or even made to for you to have less chance to find the proper item uh, with the proper attributes. So that said, this is the character panel. And on the right, we are investigating a grid-based inventory. Inventories, this is, this is an example. It will be much bigger. We're going to have more than one inventory through mounts, but the details will arrive and there are some other things that will help you with that. But the idea is you, uh, you will have a lot of things you can collect, but those things will be meaningful. I don't want you guys, we all don't want you to find 10 things in a body and then wood one of them. We want to allow you to find wood that is exciting when you find it even, not just click on a button, have a menu, see a list, click the, the non-gray or white item and be happy with that. So we want to give you a little bit more uh, on the experience of you acquiring an item. So we're testing a few things uh, and I'm get, getting feedback from Veni every couple of days of how to make this effect uh, of finding wood more pleasant. Yeah. Uh, so we are, we are currently in uh, closing that as well. But this is just, just the first steps. Uh, we're going to have multiple inventories and they will have uh, served for different purposes. This is what I would say. And uh, I see different color borders around the items in the inventory. Is that kind of a hint towards uh, different rarities? I would assume from just all my experience. Oh, what, what is rarity? Man? Well, like the white, the club is obviously bordered in white, so it's like a normal item. The green is obviously like a slightly magic item. We know, we all know blue magic items. And, and then purple is like an epic of some sort. And then we're missing the golden, the orange, the legendary, that type of thing. Is that what this represents? This sounds like a great idea. So <laughs> we'll think about it. <laughs> we, we can add it into, to the next uh, next version. Right now, by the way, we are investigating everything on the items. We are, the items are a core component of the game. And you should care about it. You should really care about finding item in the world. It should not be something you go through a gazillion of those and they have no oh meaning. Oh my goodness, that is so good to hear because I there's nothing that frustrates me more than uh, playing like an ARPG and just getting inventory upon inventory of garbage. But all that garbage, you have to read through it, what you said, like two pages of like uh, resistances and then uh, on Tuesday, if it's dark and if it's raining, it will do to water damage it's like what dude it's, if it's yeah. tuesday and if it's raining and if you're wearing a white shirt then it has a three percent chance to stun. like why am i reading this this item is crap <laughs> oh my god get me out <laughs> uh, yeah yeah this is this is will not be easy but again we, we're going to communicate it with you but we want to really pre create a modern experience with that uh, there is a cool question from uh cashier Man, if I'm butchering your name, sorry. Kajir. Kajir. Uh, do you guys already have abilities for aids or you guys need some ideas? If you have anything, guys, this is this is situation process. Any type of an idea can lead to something great. So please. Uh, oh, let's wait for uh, Bensi. He, he needs a beer. Uh, but uh, yeah, any type of idea, uh, we you have a way for us uh, to communicate with us through Discord. So write write whatever you want you can write a document if you want those things uh, will not be into the void and uh, we can even discuss it in yeah the they read meetings. they read everything and and the social media team is great about reading everything um uh, that you guys post at us and yeah get get this man a refill and bring puffy one as well jeez man all right uh how about the next visual i think we have two screenshots here for skills and skill talents so what can you tell us about this one alex so the main thing with the skills is so guys, I don't want to give you four bars. I really don't. I just want to mention that um, 
and by me means all of us because I need to then prove it to 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 the other designers and then obviously to to Veni and other people in the in the leadership. But the idea is this: we want to have meaningful amount of skills that really have an impact. Um, so the, the, the this is the skill page. But what we want to do is the the skill itself is just the beginning. The skill have a way for evolution. They have their own talents and they mutates and get augmented to do different things. So you have a way to 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 do a lot of things with the skill that usually games uh, a, li a little bit more one dimension with that. However, it's not um, trivial to make the tech uh, uh, out of it. So this test we're doing with the skills should allow us to be able to uh, add talents to a skill, specific talents for a skill, to have augmentation on the skill uh, uh, attached to an equipment, right? All those type of things, we want to do it, but it's not an easy thing to do. And will be the, the, the big push we were also doing on the gameplay to be able to provide you with, with cool skills, right? All right, how about the next one? How about 21? No, what is this? It's talent skill tree for a sword? Yeah. This, this can easily go in, in the stream by its own. So <laughs> Yeah, without details, I think it's self-explanatory, but uh, you can see this is Again, we're showing things that we're just investigating and uh, we really want to be able to, if you have a charge, this charge should do something else maybe or, or allow you to do it more often and while you're doing it to uh, be immune to damage and stuff like that. We want to add a little bit of additional option to that, but it's it's something me and Veni really uh, need to investigate, but Veni needs to build, uh, he, he and his development team, uh, team is, uh, is uh, cooking. So it will take time to be able to nail it, but we need to see how, how much we can push the tech of that. Hold on, let me just get this clear, uh, because we talked about this uh, last stream a little bit, uh, where you were talking about uh, the customizations of the spells. For example, you mm -hmm. can make your fireball be blue, be icy, be pretty. Is that uh, from somewhere yes, around this here? Is, is the, the augmentation previous, in uh, the left tab? In the augmentation okay, uh, tab, that's where this is. is the place where you can basically uh, design the way you want to look in battle because we all know that we want to swing a sword from left and right but some of us are like more artistic and they want to swing it like twice and like stab somebody Ooh. so so it's not only visual effects colors and combination and we thing. call it spell packs we call it spell packs and spell pack includes uh, vfx and animation basically imagine you have an execute spell which just uh, jumps up and slices through middle with the uh, spell pack for execution, for example, you can like uh, uh, put your axe into his skull and like put a, a kick on him or something Ooh. like this. So you can uh, very actively uh, change the way you look. And that way, with this skill, you end up having a battleground where everyone, if you have like five warriors, every one of them can be unique in, in his uh, uh, own way. And this create a vibrant looking combat. So just think about this. Yeah, because it's weird if everyone's spamming the same exact animation. Yeah. But this is really cool because I thought this augmentation was mostly about like uh, visual effects, particles, colors, and that no, type of thing. But I didn't know uh, it included also animations. Yeah. You know what that reminded me of? That reminded me of like, why, why could we never get that option in like uh, all those shooter gangster games and stuff? Like, you know, they hold they, their gun like this. Why, don't, why can't you hold it exactly. all gangster like this up to the side, right? Exactly. This is exactly what we're doing here. This is pretty cool. This is I didn't know this. This is really cool that you guys uh, put that in. All right, uh, should we move on? With um, this amazing oh, okay. animation uh, team, we can achieve amazing looking combat. And this is, if we have to say, what is the one most important system in your whole game, I would hands down say combat. So if combat is good, you have a good game. If you have everything else good, but combat is crappy, you might not might not do it. But combat alone can save the whole game. Uh, one thing, by the way, don't you don't you chat agree? Let me know. I would say maybe we already it's have with we world have, building. We have a I think world like building that. and combat are like the the two main. Uh, there is something that GGFF added. Um, looks like a balance a balance nightmare, uh, but it will be cool if we pull it off. Uh, hey, mate very very good uh comment what i would say is this our work is not to tell you how to play the game we need to make a very unique uh, full of options sandbox when it comes to how you play your class your spells and it's up to you to develop them so it's really really important to we should not shine away of something is imbalanced 
but we also have ways to make other things also balanced in the future. So we will always look for a proper, there should not be one class that just de- dominates everything. Um, but but we, it will happen. Uh, yes, <laughs> and it will not be wa- warrior. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, but uh, no, joke aside, really, it's it's important. But I will tell you one thing. I will also um, I was thinking about something when he told me, our game should not, everything should not come easy to you. If you don't actually put any effort and we just give you everything, uh, there is a lot of games doing that. For example, the leveling experience, it's, it doesn't matter. You just need to go to max level and then the actual the game starts. Uh, those things are something we, we think with those moves, something gets lost. So even the spells, to be able to get a talent, to be able to develop your spells, right now we're looking for places in the world that find you the next, uh, uh, keeps a hidden, the next rank of a specific uh, spell. And this just basically allow you to uh, find things in the world that augment your class instead of just say, hey, go to a vendor, train level two, train level three, train level four. There will be places that you are going to get those things from time to time to allow you to progress, but there will be a special cave somewhere in the in the mountain of this specific zone that if you go there and there will be a, a, a ancient uh, enemy killed and there is a something in a chest and then unlocks you something else. So we want to be able to, to work with exploration. It's super important for us, for us, the world to be meaningful for you and you to not just follow the main quest and just in two hours to be out of the first continent. This doesn't uh, doesn't give enough uh, meaning to to build a beautiful world for us, right? So just want to mention that we're doing those things, and again, we need to taste the the surface, and and you are guys the the line, the people that will tell us if those things make sense or not, right? Yeah, meaningful progression and and satisfying, you know, experiences and and growth is uh, very it's very wise. Uh, to do it that way yeah i definitely agree next up we have planned to say a few words about crafting which is nothing to show so we can just do some environment shots while alex tells us about crafting sir what it what, what what's up with that so i think we kind of mentioned it um there is you're always going to see that everything is up to debate that we're always going to challenge ourselves on the technical side on the game design side in my my desire to some extent and we'll see what it works for example is to have the crafting to be a really big part of the game not always to just go find the sword as i told you maybe the boss give you a crafting material that allows you to craft something that you never be able to do or augment an item that you before was just a very good base of a sword and now with this augmentation now you have a new passive for your dash or something else so we're looking for uh, the crafting should be a big role. This is what I would say. The housing have a, a, a amazing um, uh, experience, amazing things you're building, customizing, but the the crafting of, of gear at least should be really, it should not be something that is soft. It should not be like, I craft my best 10 items and it's over and I never ever craft until they release the new material in a month because obviously after release we want also to have the dynamics for that uh one final thing i would say about the crafting because we cannot show you anything right but it's uh, the, the the design behind it is that the crafting material should be connected to the war there should be a special spirit veil in a dungeon in a lake under under a lake in an old temple in the middle of the first continent for example and when you go and use this veil then with them, you, with this thing, you craft something else. And this is part of the war, and maybe the souls were coming from this fight when the undead uh, overtook the old human capital, and there is a lot of that. So we need to build the world in, in the connectivity with the war we're uh, also uh, creating on the, on, uh, on the back end. So this, this is it. We cannot do much more than that. I would def- just tell you that the, the mathematics behind it start to make complete sense and the attributes and the passives and the actives but the crafting itself, itself will be introduced in more details in, in some of the next streams okay cool um by the way we're we're getting towards the end towards the q a session but i think we missed for some reason to show a couple of uh, visuals that i had planned for the undead ones production did we show 24 through 27 while we talked uh, for the art update because I don't think we did. 
So we, we did something cool for the other that I will tell you that much. Yeah, I think we're gonna be able to talk about that a bit more. Uh, so if we can bring down, uh, if we can t bring zero down, and the other ones, and pull up, is it twenty fourth or twenty seventh? Man, I had so many. Yeah, this is it. What is this, Alex? So, uh, Velteras is the name we picked for the capital of the Andet. What we wanted to do is create a very, uh, how to say it, very interesting races. We didn't want, especially I play Horde, so uh, Venice and Ala Alliance. In some games, that other games, uh, but usually we wanted to be uh, done that to be uh, a little bit more gray, to not be like just the bad guys. So we moved away from like the zombification of them that they're a little bit more wise now they're <clears throat> mortal, they're more vampiric, but they're not vampires, they're undeads, but they're a little bit, they're different lords that, um, that uh, control this just, world. Just stop you just for one sec. Kala, can you pull up 39? Because he's talking exactly about that, I think. Uh... Uh, I have a visual that I would like you to... Exactly, this is what you're talking about, right? Yes, yes, we, we want them to have Part shows. Of, not, not everything. Yeah, yes. of course, but this is the vibe. Like, the old zombie approach where it's like, you know, everyone's seen the zombie. Like, zombies are so done and done and done and done and done and over done and you guys are putting an entirely new spin on it, which is so They're awesome. still undead, right? We still want to go through that, but the, we want to be more like... The that because they're immortal, they really care about one thing, knowledge. They want to preserve the knowledge of everything. So basically, it's almost like when you play with any race, what we wanted to do from the narrative point of view is to have its own journey. When you play a human, you don't uh, human undead elf, they don't just end up go kill the boss, the last boss in the game. It should not be like that. We want every race to have its own narrative, war and purpose for the character. And then that is more like noir, uh, mystical, finding knowledge, fighting between the worlds, and this kind of a political intrigues are where, where actually undeads are uh, kind of chemical. The regular undead that we're used to seeing are zombies who want to eat brains. So that's kind of a pursuit of for knowledge as well, right? If you think about it. <laughs> yeah, and here it's something very important. We are also bringing this from the war. Undead uh, in Scars of Honor is race that is trying to stop the decay they are trying to keep their uh, outer beauty while hiding their inner rotting parts so we have a lot of uh, overhaul done in that uh, direction uh, allo allowing a lot of uh, like ceramic prosthetics oh and, let's show that stuff. So let's show the next undead like one yeah let's i think we have something to yeah. show for that so i think like but by the way, just from narrative perspective, our narrative writer, uh, art uh, designer is writing a whole story about the arc of the race. Yeah, exactly. The sub faction of the race, uh, sub factions, uh, factions, sorry. Uh, their political views, everything. We're, we're fleshing out an actual uh, living beings that have their own motivation instead of just an NPC that does damage, right? And this looks so great. Like, incorporating these prosthetics and porcelain stuff and masks and gold and and just these high fashion high art kind of like uh, aristocratic type things just gives such a more interesting and, and refreshing take on the undead i'm so proud of you guys for, for and, and it's bold it's because like you know it's tried and tested just slap a zombie on there make it would say brains and you're we, done we but, take them more to the baroque style that yeah. uh, that we can incorporate and yeah and there's so much stuff like you can do so little with like a city full of brain zombies whereas <laughs> yeah. here i can just tell there's intrigue there's politics there's vying interests i feel that I, like if you have a bunch of regular undead like you can't have politics and that type of thing whereas here just by looking at this picture i can tell there's probably going to be a faction that are more obsessed with beauty a faction that are more obsessed with knowledge ones that have like i can only imagine all the all the mini quests and storylines that can be yeah. weaved with this and it Absolutely. would be so much more engaging than just brains you know? <laughs> okay that's cool uh do we have another one of these oh so there's some the hairstyles yeah. and customizations for undead as well all these look really nice. Uh, let's shout out. Who's the artist uh, behind these? These are really good. Shout out to whoever did this. It's the whole team. It's a whole to the <laughs> team. Group effort, huh? Okay. It is, it is. So it, it's, uh, it's hard to pick one, right? But the team is doing a lot of, of this to be able to create this, the narrative we're talking about to, to, to put it on, on display, right? Nice. 
Okay, pretty cool. And I think, uh, is there one more? I think there's one more of the undead, one more image, or am I maybe mistaken? If not, this will be bringing us to our Q&A session, yep. guys. And this time, we have a bunch of questions. We're going to try to answer uh, as many of them as we can before we our bat batteries totally run out. But uh, a reminder, feel free to shoot any and all questions for uh, the team on our official channel. So uh, usually before stream, um, um, like a couple weeks or like a week before stream or something, Puffy... Uh, posts uh, on Discord and uh, wherever he, uh, he gets his hands on you guys uh, a link for our forum where you can submit questions and a number of you have done exactly that and now we're gonna go through them since there's a bunch and uh, I I just I really wanted to shortlist like the best ones but like all of them are so good so I just put a bunch of them on the list right here before just right before the stream we tried to kind of cut them down a little bit because there's a bunch of them didn't manage to so i say we do blitz yep. quick answers because there's a bunch of questions i'd much rather do quick blitz uh, answers to more questions rather than uh, a deep dive so let's just speed run through these i'm going to be reading these out for you okay. guys and you just okay. guys sweet keep, let's keep it short and sweet all right uh production let's get these rolling so kajir who's also in chat asks do you plan the raids for the long term or can you clear the raid in the same day as in the modern mmorpgs currently on the market i think this is a very very big topic and now speaking uh, uh for raids is is it is something that is like ahead of time um we can uh, go both ways but this is why we guys uh need your feedback so let us know in the chat what is your uh, uh preferred take we'll take it into consideration uh together with all the other feedback that we receive from you and we'll come up with a, a solid game design that we i think it deserves a dedicated like stream just to speak about rights rather than just a vague answer in uh, um for sure. Yeah. And so for stick. a question like this, just say yeah. too early. And then too we'll just move on. <laughs> too early. That's the answer. Too early. By the way, before we jump on to the next one, I see one in chat. How is the development for Mac going? Is it going good? It's going absolutely good. I have okay. many computers. <laughs> okay. You know what? That's good. Let's, let, let's keep it like that. All right. Next one. Uh, do you... Okay. Production. Let's get the next one up. Uh, are you making any changes to the undead models as well? Yes, this is exactly Let's the question move that we yeah, moved to the next one. We already covered the undead creativity. Yeah, 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 we did the thing. Oh, Disabellum and Kajir, both of them asked, uh, what do you think of the idea that if the quest gets too long and no players register, the system suggests looking for companions? In other words, NPCs with whom you can uh, then run the dungeon. Have you guys... Uh, uh, face this issue where you're like queuing for something and there's no players and you get frustrated look one thing i would yeah. say uh, yeah that's the main the queue issue. when you say queue then we need to stop and discuss <laughs> yeah but the dungeon dungeon itself is something again we we need to to make more efforts to to come with the the, the final thing to we want to do but one thing I would say is that uh, NPC being hard sounds very cool but we what we really don't want to do is to uh work with bots so we need to be careful to not have botting to not have just a redundancy that pretends to be uh, actual players so just want to mention that because it's it's a problem i think from in the modern industry at the moment yeah yeah or you can look into mercenaries or all kinds of things but again it's early for that so let's get but before that one from chat will there be an anti-cheat system uh what will your approach towards hackers once the game is out will be this is something that is extremely uh, valid and if you designed your architecture right basically you shouldn't be having like uh, the typical uh, i'm sending you 10 gold but you receive like a million so if you go in development with the idea of never trust the client then you should be safe on that sound on, the, on that side other measures needs to be applied besides this of course but yeah we have plenty there are l several layers to fight against uh, uh, hackers also one thing is basically the development is not as fast as it, it can be if the game was offline only right yeah, that's absolutely. the main thing this thing really makes the development uh taking more time right absolutely okay next one uh can we get the next one production Will there be taxes for housing? Will they need any type of maintenance? Can we customize the size of our homes? Will it be possible to grow crops in them? 
too early, I assume, to tell. No, no, no. no it's, it's not too early. It, it, it is sounding discussed already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but basically, basically, the housing itself, it's it, it has its own uh, progression of story. Um, everything additional, when it comes to um, customization, we really want to put those things. But please don't think uh, as of a house as a, as a completely uh, built your uh, farm type of a game. We want to keep you in the house with a specific purpose. The house is your home. You can invite people there. You can use some of the uh, amenities of the of the house, but you should play on the world map. The house is your hub where you prepare to go on the journey. And it, for example, if I'm going to go for a few hours for gathering or I'm going to the arena, I'm going to come differently prepared from the house. So the preparation ha happens there, but we're not going to just say, hey, stay in the house for six hours, don't talk with people, and we'll be fine. We need to be careful to not uh, keep you there too much. <clears throat> this, is, this is important. Yeah. Okay, how about the next one? Another one from Kajir. Uh, will there be a social score system? For example, if players behave fairly and are friendly and are simply good, that uh, you can rate them according to performance? This is great, uh, a great question. And this is, again, something that is like a whole another topic. Uh, behaving in MMORPGs is something very crucial. Uh, your community becoming toxic because we can say several titles where we can say this is very toxic like game and this is something where it is okay. So, yes, we need to implement something, but it needs to be very carefully thought of so that it doesn't really too much affect uh, the, the, the general gameplay. The, the good part is that uh, we have experience with multiple uh, similar systems just to keep players safe and to feel that they're not uh, under pressure. So we, we have the past experience and we can use that here as well. One great example of something that we really don't want to see. We really don't want to see level 50 killing like level two or three because it just doesn't make sense it, there is no honor in this you know <laughs> but there is a lot of scars coming out of that. <laughs> there is a lot of scars for the level two but no honor for the <laughs> for uh, the 50 level i was talking to someone recently and they told me about a game that they were in that had a really 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 heavy mechanic about rating other players as friendly and good mm. which would be really beneficial to the player to the point where everyone was running around trying to be super nice and helpful people would be like and he was like man i can't believe the world like i stepping into a new world i mean everyone was so friendly I'm like what's going on everyone's offering you things offering you advice being nice writing nicely in yeah. chat. it's like whoa and it's so easy to do it, just you incentivize them. So yeah, yeah that's really cool. I was really impressed when I heard that because I'd never thought of that before he told me, like, man, this game has its system where like if you if someone clicks on you and says, this guy was nice to me, it gives you like a bunch of, I don't know, currency or whatever. It's like, wow. Okay. Especially if you play Demon, right? You should be the, the, the best person so in the cool. world. All right, uh, can we get another one? We know you don't want to include flying mounts in the game, but how big the maps will be to explore them up uh, how big will the maps be to explore them with your ground mounts? Well, big. <laughs> They're going to be big. Like much, like There's going to be big enough. It's going to be big enough to be fun and not too big, so it's not fun. One Next thing, no, no, <laughs> something okay, important. Okay, something important. On the level design, we want really to, to, to take the best every part of the map to make a sense, right? So that's something super important. I will never... We don't have this thing coming back to that. I don't want you to run two kilometers to, to find your, uh, I know, wolf that you need to slay. Uh, and this is a very boring quest, but we're not going to have those. But the idea is we want in a, doesn't matter how big is the environment, it should be alive. So that's a little bit different, right? Um, don't, don't, the size matter, and we're going to make a big continents, a lot of them, more than two, hopefully, if any. Uh, but we don't want uh, you to just um, run without a purpose. So that's 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 why yeah. uh, the size matter, but the, the substance matter more. <laughs> Disabellum says Alex will become a meme. I already see it. You are doing the aliens. Yes, like, yes. Aliens, <laughs> man. It's aliens. Yes. All right, cool. Uh, all right. Um, we have a question, but I think we answered that last time. I'm just going to touch on this because... I Finally, I can answer something. So someone says, how will the in-game, uh, or not someone, it's uh, Cyber Operator Zero. He asks in Twitch chat, how will the in-game economy be managed? Will there be a system to help avoid players having max gold in rendering in-game money useless at a certain point? So I'm 
even though I don't know nothing, I'm not on the development team, I'm pretty confident to answer this. This is obviously something that comes last, the balancing of the economy. Uh, it's obviously, we all know that in MMO RPGs and MMO games in general, the healthy economy is super vital, super important. And it's something that uh, it's an iterative process. It needs to get tweaked. It needs to get yeah. tweaked many times before release. And then after release, depending on how dynamics and prices fluctuate, we need to do that. I mean, we're the guys are building a freaking MMO, guys. Uh, they know so much about so many things. Can you imagine that they won't uh, do? Ooh, sorry for banging on the table. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting. I got excited. And I'm banging on the table, guys. Next time, we'll. I think we'll. I think we'll be changing the microphone so we can freely slam the table as much as we want. We, right? yeah. we presented them. Now we can remove them and present the new ones. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, guys, this is a, an, an iterative process. Everyone here knows that. Uh, a, a broken economy in a game can totally ruin yeah, it. Absolutely. So we will not allow Scars of Honor to be ruined so, by a broken economy, right? I think it's probably about time to ask the final question for the stream. For the domination or for the sacred order? Let us know in the chat, guys. Are you saying to, to end yeah, the Q&A session? I, I think we should stop because we have so many different uh, questions which we are dedicated towards uh, specific uh, um, streams themselves and we are already uh, kind of going too much on that on that side Ooh, all right guys we, we're getting shut down <laughs> <laughs> we're shut down uh if your answer didn't get uh if your, if your question didn't get answered just keep spamming us with it uh on the then uh you can do it on discord there will be a forum uh thread for the next uh stream where we, we we're going to be doing this again and uh yeah so going off to closing now yeah yeah can we get on the full camera production uh it's been how long it's like almost yeah we've done a good hour and a half almost yeah. of a stream again it's a it's a doozy it's a long one i hope i hope you guys are happy with us i hope we brought more content than last time and again there will be like each next one hopefully uh will be better in terms of uh of the, sh the stuff we show right now we're really strapped for for things to show because everything as you guys heard a million times is going through such a huge overhaul and it's just very suboptimal right now things are getting changed things are getting so improved so much that is just patience 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 will be great and another thing i want to touch on before we go is uh, we're in development uh, release date is somewhere in the future you guys know a lot of people aren't waiting for that a lot of people just want the game just want to play the game that's fine all right you guys who are in here right now are very special you're that small percent who are excited about the game so far um earlier so that's that's very that's very special very proactively yeah yeah we're very thankful to you guys um if you share uh, your thoughts about the game uh with someone and they're like not excited about it just let them know man let them know it's still in development it's going to be out when it's out and it's going to be great these are the steps that we have to go through variant one was for us to just lock ourselves in have no communication with you guys and uh just make you wait we're deciding to be more transparent to have these streams but there's there's we can't show everything because everything is not done yet but thank you for your patience uh it's really, it's really good to do these i'm really proud of of, of venalin for taking this transparent approach absolutely okay so this is good it's good what okay. we're doing Thank you. Thank nice you, everyone. to see you. <laughs> so, you have a good one, guys. See you next time. Peace. Yeah. Peace.